So welcome to our older adult hour. Um, today we're really happy to have both Sarah Cody and Sarah Shaw from the Johnny Cake Center of Westerly with us today and they're going to talk a little bit about the organization and what they offer. Awesome. Thank you, Cassie, for having us. Um, as you can see, we do have some slides here, but it's meant to be very casual, very informal, just to kind of help do a brief overview of what we do, what we're up to, um, but always happy to have any questions or yeah, um, and so everyone knows um, I'm the director of our social services department and Sarah is the manager of our food pantry. So we're gonna kind of talk about our respective pieces a little bit. So yeah, so we'll get started. So we like to just start with our mission statement just so everyone kind of knows what our, our main focus is. So our mission is to provide a continuum of services in cooperation with other agencies in our area to assist people through crisis situations and work with each individual to find a path out of dependency towards self-sufficiency. So that's really kind of the heart of our organization and what everything we do is geared towards. Um, and a very brief history as well. So, um, and some, you know, many Westerly um, long timers know a lot of this already, but um, the Johnny Cake Center started in 1975 in Bradford. Um, many still reference it as, as the Bradford Johnny Cake Center. Um, <laughs> but in 2007, we did move to Westerly and officially became the Johnny Cake Center of Westerly at that time. Um, many also know this as well. In March, 2010, our social services department was completely destroyed by four feet of flood water just a few years after moving in, um, had to completely pretty much start over and, and rehab the entire space, but it really helped the town to come together um, for a really challenging time um, in our history. Um, but now, you know, as part of our social services operations, as really as our center as a whole, and as is mentioned in our mission as well, we network with a lot of other agencies in the area, like the library, the senior center, the warm center, Pocket neighborhood center, um, to just really provide um, the best assistance that we can and, and relying on all of our unique strengths and offerings. So, um, and one other thing we do like to mention as well to make sure everybody knows is that the Johnny Cake Center of Hope that's in Peacedale is actually a separate organization than us. Um, we do have very similar services and structure. Um, we both have our thrift store, we both have our food pantry and social services um, departments, but we are actually standalone agencies and we cover different um, geographical areas. So we don't overlap at all, actually, in terms of who we service. So a little bit about the thrift store, um, which I think is the, the the area that many know us for. Um, so we have about a 7,000 square foot thrift store on site with us. Um, we had a renovation actually last spring, right in the heart of COVID, we were able to make that happen, which you know we're so grateful for. So if anyone hasn't seen our new renovation, we have a new book room and all sorts of great stuff going on. So feel free to come visit us at 20th Industrial Drive. Um, we have a wide variety of items from clothes to furniture to electrical supplies. We have a children's room with toys, um, really you name it, and, and there's a good chance that if we don't carry it now we have in the past so um yeah and every single item that we do have is a donation um from the local community so it's really a community driven effort that we have on site and we're very grateful for that um and all of the proceeds from the store directly support our food pantry and our social services efforts. Um, so in that sense, the thrift store really is a social enterprise. So every dollar um, that our thrift store takes in, it allows um, us to purchase about 10 pounds of food. I know Sarah will elaborate on that a little bit more later, but um, yeah, something we're very, you know, we love to share out because we just think that's so cool. Um, so a little bit about social services. So we really pride ourselves on providing wraparound basic needs assistance, um, really whatever way we can. Our service area is Westerly, Charlestown, Richmond, and Hopkinton. Uh, if you live in one of those areas, um, we are able to register you in our system and we can we can provide you whatever services that you may need. So uh, we're really kind of the first point for any clients that come our way, um, regardless of what they may be looking for. So along with doing check-ins for the food pantry, if someone's coming um, to receive some food, we register all of our families into our system. Um, we have a pretty robust emergency financial assistance program um, where we assist with things like like housing expenses, so rent, mortgage, utilities, heating. We can help with medical bills. We can help with education expenses. So say someone may want to um, go for a CNA course, we may be able to help with some of the tuition for that. Um, 
so that along with our food pantry, I would say that's probably the largest service that we offer. Um, we also administer our Splash and Power Pack program. So next year, next year, I'm sorry, next week, we're going to be mm -hmm. starting the signups for our Splash program for the summer. Um, and basically what that is, is it's um, breakfast and lunch groceries for school age children. And they can come, clients can come here once a week and pick that up from us um, throughout the summer. And it's a full week of that while, while children are home from school. And then in the fall, that transitions to our Power Pack program, which is very similar, but it's weekend breakfast and lunch groceries while children are in school school during the week. So it just changes a little bit in terms of um, amount. So we're soon switching over to Splash for the summer. Um, so yeah, we also offer vouchers for our thrift store. So um, if someone could use some assistance with purchasing clothing, household items, furniture, a couple of new vouchers that we offer are for electronic items like microwaves, toasters, lamps, things like that. Um, we also have a new children's voucher for children's activities. So um, if a parent comes and has a school aged child that could benefit from either books or toys, puzzles, DVDs, that's all available on a voucher now as well. And someone could take that voucher into the store to purchase those items um, at a reduced Right. Um, and yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, we work really closely with local agencies. We do a lot of referrals and a lot of collaborating to just best meet the needs of the families that we're working with, whatever that may look like. So yeah, Sarah, I'll kick it over to you. All righty. So as um, Sarah mentioned earlier, I am our food pantry manager and um, I will call myself a co-manager of our community garden um, that we took full acquisition of two years ago now. Um, well, this will be our second full year of growing. Um, under the Johnny Cake Center logo, if you will. Um, but our uh, food pantry is, we're so proud. It's, it's interesting because obviously we're, we're gearing this presentation to how things will normally run, not necessarily how they are running and have been running for the last mm -hmm. year. Um, but as the slide here shows you, is we are very proud to have a full service um, client choice model for our pantry, which means uh, folks who need our services get to come in and shop the shelves themselves for their groceries. Um, obviously right now we're doing things a little differently, um, but that's how we're um, set up and how we'd like to be um, very, very soon in the near future again. Um, so our clients have the option to come to our pantry and select the food themselves, as I said, um, and if they prefer, we can still do the shopping for them. Um, and as we reopen, we plan on having that be the same model. Um, if you're not comfortable coming in yet, obviously we're not gonna force anyone to do so. Our clients can come in once every 30 days to take advantage of this. And it replicates roughly about a week's worth of groceries um, that we're trying to give out on a monthly basis. Next slide. Um, before I move on to this, I'd like to say that we can also provide an emergency um, voucher for people to come in to use our pantry. So if they can't quite make the 30 days, um, you can come in for a smaller pared down version of that to get you through. Um, and we also want to make sure everybody knows that it's not, um, it's not an exclusive program. It's, if you're signed up to receive services from the Johnny Cake Center, we encourage you to receive services in any other pantry um, in your service area that can help you. Because we understand we are only giving out a week's worth of groceries. So we want to um, let everybody know that you can go to all the, the pantries in the area. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we serve Westerly, Charlestown, Hopkinton, and Richmond. Um, that's all kind of, everybody can see that for themselves because I already said it just in a different order. But yeah, we pride ourselves on, on our selection of our product. We really try to imitate what a, a grocery store would be um, just on a smaller version. So we always have fresh, um, fresh items like milk, eggs, cheese, um, an assortment of meats, fresh produce, um, and of course all the non-perishable items that people uh, more regularly associate with a food pantry. Um, right now we are heading into fresh produce season, which is my favorite time of year, which is why they let me head up the garden because it's one of my favorite things to provide our folks with our fresh veggies. And now I get to have a hand in growing them, which is fantastic. Go ahead. All righty, here we go, right into the garden. What a perfect segue. Um, again, we took it over fully. Um, we were always the fiscal agent, so we would help take care of their finances, their bookkeeping, things like that. Um, and partnered with the Charlestown Community Garden. Um, the produce that is grown there goes to the Johnny Cake Center, but as well as other local agencies in the area, um, which is really nice. Last year was, was very challenging for us, um, I would say with, with COVID and everything like that. Um, we didn't grow quite as much, but we're really excited to get back to it in full force this year. Um, on average, it is about 4,000 pounds of fresh organic produce that we grow. 
Um, and we do share out to the Warm Center, um, PNC right over the line in Connecticut, things like that. Um, our volunteers perform every task there. You don't need um, any gardening experience. We are always looking for volunteers if that's something that interests you. We're there twice a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, nine to noon, weather permitting. Um, and it is, it's a lot of fun. It's a beautiful space. We're kind of taking this year as a refresh year to rebuild some spots, um, work on some areas that have been a little neglected over the years. Um, and that's one of the wonderful things about being a full part of the Johnny Keek Center is now we have the opportunity to have grants written for us by our wonderful grant writer. Um, and one has already come through for this season, which has helped facilitate a lot of these big projects that we've been doing. And as it says there, we're right in Integrate Park next to the Senior Center, which is also an agency we um, assist with and we'll give them fresh produce for their Meals on Wheels program. And before, if I can just jump in for a quick second, Sarah, Please. there's a couple of things that I did not mention that I would like to just add as well. So um, alongside the pantry, we do also currently partner with the Christ Church Living Supply Closet. Um, yeah. And we currently have all of their living supply and toiletry items on site with us that um, our clients can receive every 30 days. However, um, the Christ Church used to service a larger service area than we currently do, um, including over the border into Connecticut. So if there are individuals in the area that are living in Connecticut that use to receive Christchurch Living Supply or might be interested in that, they can feel free to reach out to us for any questions and we would be happy to get them set up for that. Um, so anyone can come to us for that. And it's um, paper goods, cleaning supplies, all those kinds of things, toilet paper, paper towels. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention that I neglected to mention earlier is the Westerly Village. Um, so Cassie had myself and Lori Meisner here just a few months ago to chat about it, um, which thank you again, Cassie, for that. That was great. Um, we had a great conversation that day. And um, just to kind of plug it a little bit further, we, as of today, actually, we are officially the Westerly Village and we are officially operational. So um, I know <laughs> uh, after almost a year of planning and organizing, we're very, very excited that it is officially a reality. Um, but just to chat a little bit further about what that entails, if there is anyone who might be interested in that, um, it really is kind of a community of mutual support that we are building here in Westerly comprised of volunteers and members. Um, and volunteers and members get matched together based on what their unique either um, offerings are, what they would like to volunteer to do, or what the unique need of a member may be. Um, members do have to live in Westerly, but um, the goal is to assist members in aging as place as they do get older with whatever supports they may need to do so. Um, um, so we're offering things like home maintenance, errands, um, social events and opportunities, especially as things continue to open. We're hoping to offer different events and things like that. Um, we are doing technology support in home. Um, so things like help with Microsoft products, teaching Zoom. Um, so really a, a nice array of things that we're very excited about. And it's continuing to expand as we have new volunteers that join us with their unique interests as well. So um, as of today, I can't even believe it, July 1, um, we are officially offering services and we are currently recruiting members and volunteers. So if anyone has any um, interest in that, gosh, I'm blanking out what exactly the email address is, but Cassie, I can give it to you to put in the, um, in the section, but we'll actually, I'll, I'll tab over as well. This is my contact information. So please feel free to reach out to me. And I'm happy to connect you to the right place through the Village Common. Um, but yeah, that's all I wanted to share. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. It's very exciting. Yeah, anyone who's been following along with this program, we've mentioned that, like you said, you were on with Lori and others from the steering committee, and we've talked about it um, more or less in every meeting, I think. Super excited <laughs> to be here now, um, and that people can begin getting services. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're very excited um, and so grateful to, to all of the interest that we've had about it. Um, you know, it's just you know, especially, I don't know if anyone saw it too, it was in the Westerly Sun this past Sunday um, on the front page and we were able to, um, we're just really excited about being able to kind of share it out and, and you know, gather that interest and just keep it growing. We're very excited, so yeah. Absolutely. Anyways, this is our contact information. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions um, about services and here's Sarah's as well. And I'm sure she can answer anything pantry Community garden, farmers market. I don't know if we mentioned the <laughs> farmers market, Sarah. Oh, There's so many things. <laughs> this is a, a busy, busy time of year for us, for sure. Um, it's like our polls, right? We're busy at the holidays, and then really, oh. really busy right now. But yeah, our uh, our produce market will start in a couple weeks um, out in our back parking lot. We're very excited to have it 
um, go back to its normal walk-up model. And the intention is for any, any of our um, community members that could use some fresh produce can come on by and get some fresh produce. And also we'll have resource tables set up um, most days for different community resources. So come on down. That's exciting. Very good. Coming soon. I do have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, so for a few of the programs and services that you offer, you do reference um, your clients. So how does one become a client if they're interested in receiving those services? Sure. So right now it does continue to look a little bit different than how it usually does just with COVID. I'm hoping in the coming months that we will transition back to the model that we used to have where it's all really done in person. Um, but right now we've tried to move that a bit more remotely because um, it does involve some documents and intake packets. So basically the best thing for someone to do would be to contact us at our office. Um, they can contact me directly at the information on the screen right now. Um, they do have to live in our service area. So as a reminder, that's Westerly, Charlestown, Richmond and Hockington. Um, and there's really a couple of different options at this point. We do our best to work with everyone and in their individual technological capabilities um, and what works best for them. So we have an intake packet. It's either available online or we can complete it with someone over the phone. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, then there's just some documents that we do ask for as well. So we ask for photo ID, um, proof of residency. So that can either be um, your current lease or a current national grid bill, um, something like that. And then proof of income for the household just to have on record as part of our file. So once we have all all of those things, the intake packet completed and the documents that are necessary, someone is considered to be registered with us. And then we just ask for updated information every year just to ensure we have everything um, updated, really. So yeah, that's kind of the basics of it. Great. Mm -hmm. good. And so everyone should kind of um, keep checking back for updates on when and how the reopening would be happening, right? As we get, I mean, yes. it's quite nosed right now. But exactly. Exactly. Um, we are starting to um, do some email blasts and things to our families to try to keep them up to date on all the different changes and things that are happening right now. So that is something we're starting to do going forward. So if anyone is interested in that, please let us know as well. And we could add them. And I've seen too that on Facebook, you've been putting up um, for the thrift store. Um, nice, you know, pick where people have the option to reserve items like online through there too. Is that something you plan on continuing? I think it's really cool. I think it's a good service. Yeah. I'm not sure, Sarah, do you know for sure? Um, from what I know, I do believe the thrift store plans on keeping that in place because it is a fun way to treasure hunt. Um, <laughs> but again, I, I'm not a hundred percent positive, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's been well received um, mm -hmm. and it will continue. But yeah, I think so too. It is really cool. I know. I feel like it's been interesting. You know, COVID has been such a challenging and difficult time, but there is a lot of things that have come out of it that maybe we wouldn't have thought to do otherwise that are here to stay now, you know? Um, so. Yeah, they actually managed to kind of help with accessibility and things. A little yeah, bit. yeah. Thinking, thinking differently. So, yeah. Alrighty. Well, again, if anybody has any questions for them or wants any more information, um, the contact information is here. And then I will also be putting it in the summary for our video recording. Um, so feel free to reach out. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here today, Sarah and Sarah. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for having us. So there are a few other updates that I wanted to share that have come across my plate um, recently. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. One second. Okay, so one of them is through the Alzheimer's Association through their website. Um, if you haven't visited it, it is a really good resource both for those who are struggling with Alzheimer's as well as um, caregivers. And they recently posted, they had their, um, they had their 10th annual Caregivers Journey Conference and they do have that completely online. So you can go through and view that conference, the recorded version. Um, so if you visit their website, it's alz.org slash ri. Scroll down a little bit on the main page and then you'll see the missed out on our 10th annual caregivers journey conference. You can click this link here. And that will bring you to all the information you need. Um, I do believe that they want you to fill out a brief form. Yes, that'll lead you to the Google doc um, which will then give you access to the recording. But it is, again, just a really good resource, um, especially for those who are caregivers for somebody who has Alzheimer's. So that's one of the things that I have. I would also check out on their website, they have a lot of other webinars um, and support that they offer. Let me see. 
Okay, so if we go down again, just a little bit down the page on their main page, um, click here to access our virtual programs and support groups. Everything from dementia conversations um, with others to webinars on warning signs for Alzheimer's. Here are all of their support groups throughout the state of Rhode Island. So if you did want to view one of their webinars, you could go here to searching for a program, click on that link. And then they have online educational programs and they'll have all of them up there for you to look through and view at your leisure. So it just really is a very good resource um, for those who are interested in learning more or gaining more support. Now, another thing I want to show you is just the library website, westerlylibrary.org. I do like to show you some of the upcoming events every meeting. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that we are officially now reopened um, pretty much to the point we were pre-COVID, so we're very excited about that. Our public spaces, including the old main reading room where we have all of our magazines and our newspapers, that has reopened. Um, the tables throughout the building. And of course we have our quiet study rooms on the second floor as well. For the most part, our programs are remaining virtual through the end of August, mainly because we had planned them that way and it's very hard to change things kind of last minute. So our summer programs mainly are going to be online, but beginning in September, you should see a lot more in-person programs. So I wanna show you our event calendar. If you go to www.westerlylibrary.org, and go to events on the top and full calendar. That will give you everything that is coming up. And of course, on the left-hand side here, you can go through and filter if you were just interested in say gardening programs or you were only interested in more on technology. You could click one of those and apply and it would get rid of, it would only show you those programs that are relevant to that topic. Um, but a few things that I know will be exciting that we have coming up for those of you who are itching to get out and about. Um, the walking tours of Wilcox Park, which are put on by the Master Gardeners, those have returned. They're going to be on the um, every other Saturday throughout the summer. Um, so the first one we have is on July 10th, and it is on specimen trees. And then we have another one scrolling down two weeks later on the 24th, and that one is about flowers and trees native to Rhode Island. Um, so for the walking tours, you would just meet at the, um, at the Memorial Fountain in the park. They last from 10 o'clock until more or less 11.30. Um, and you don't need to register in advance for those. You can just sign up. So it's a really good way to get out and about in the park and learn something new at the same time. Um, Another thing that we have going on is because we don't have our normal book sale and we haven't for the past year, the Friends of the Library are putting together pop-up book sales, which are going to take place every Thursday on the library esplanade. So that's on the side entrance of the library from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. And um, again, that's Thursdays during the summer. So beginning on July 8th and running through um, August 26th. So please visit us there if you want to check out what books we have to offer. Um, and again, just look through our calendar. There's a lot of other events, um, both virtual and some in person that are returning. We do have our knit and crochet group that meets every Tuesday here at the library, um, which is just starting again in person, which is really exciting. And we also are continuing to do our craft programs, which have been really popular. Those ones are not in person. They are craft kits to go, which you can pick up um, on select Mondays here at the library as supplies last. And those have been really popular um, really with all ages. So if you're crafty at all, looking for something to do with your hands, I would recommend those as well. And of course, when we talk about resources, especially in and around Westerly, if you have questions about anything or if you wanted to know who you should be reaching out to, one of the resources we have is our community resource advocate, um, Susan Rosen, who she is available currently via email um, Tuesdays is sort of her main time that she's available from one until four, but if you do click on that event, you will find her email address and she does check that throughout the week too. So anything that, any questions you have about local resources or who you should connect with, um, for various needs that you're looking to have met, she is a fantastic resource for those. So I would recommend getting in touch with her.
That's about it for upcoming events. Our next older adult hour, which is still going to be virtual, um, is going to be taking place on August 5th. That's the first Thursday of August. Um, and the plan is that after that, we will be looking at holding them once again in the library. Um, so please, if you have any questions about that, reach out to me. My information is in the summary for the video. Um, but it's also, my name is Cassie and it is cscobrack at westerlylibrary.org. So please reach out to me if you have any questions about anything. Um, and we look forward to seeing you.